Matinee Theatre. The makers of Vicks Vapor Rob present a half hour of romance and adventure starring Victor Jory and featuring Gertrude Warner in Wuthering Heights. This program was formerly called Dangerously Yours, and hereafter will be known as the Matinee Theater in order to bring you a greater variety of plays. First, here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks Vapor Rub. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Martin Gable. Today we bring you a story penned over a hundred years ago on the Haworth Moors by the brilliant genius that was Emily Bronte. A story that through the passing years has become one of the world's greatest dramatic classics, Wuthering Heights. Our story opens in the shadowy bedroom in the gloomy old house at Wuthering Heights. Cliff, Doctor, is there any change? She seems to be quieter. Uh, if he wanted to live, I, I think I could save him. Uh, As it is, I, I just don't know. Uh, there he goes, calling for her uh, again. Oh, it's enough to break your heart. Uh, Come in. Come in. Oh, How long has Catherine been dead? Oh, I I think it's close to 20 years. Uh, this was her room, you know. Kathy and Hindley and Heathcliff grew up in this house together. And Heathcliff might have been their actual brother the way he was treated until Mr. Earnshaw died. I was their nurse. You know. Heathcliff was an orphan, wasn't he? Yes, Mr. Earnshaw. Found the lad wandering in the streets in London and brought him home. And after Mr. Earnshaw died, Hindley did everything he could to make life unbearable for Heathcliff. With the result that the boy spent uh, more time in the stable than the house. Kathy, come in, Kathy. Oh, my darling. No. Oh. Hear me, please. Poor fellow. Hear me. Oh, she beautiful. Yes, yes, a wild, wicked slip she was. But she had the bonniest eyes, the sweetest smile, and the lightest foot in the parish. Kathy. 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 I've got to get. Help me, help me. Oh, yes, yes, now he's got his head again. Yes. Kathy, let no, me up, you fool. Oh, she's outside the window trying to get in. Please, Don't please. you hear her? Still Don't you hear her outside crying in the wind and the snow? Let her in. No, let no. her in. There's no one on outside, Kathy. Heathcliff. Oh, Kathy, come back to my heart. When we were young, you said you'd love me always, Kathy. Remember that day, we ran through the heather, laughing at nothing, laughing at everything, and the wind ran with us. And we were drunk with the smell of the moors and excitement of being young, of being young together. <laughs> oh, I'm completely out of breath. Uh, come on, it's only a few more steps to the top of the rock. Uh, there. Oh, Heathcliff, we're on top of the whole world. Mm, the sun's going down. The moor looks as though they're on fire. Oh, it's so beautiful, it almost makes you want to cry. Don't cry. It hurts me when you cry. It hurts you? It hurts you, Heathcliff? Yes. Oh, don't turn away from me, Heathcliff. Look at me. Tell me why. I don't know. Do you think... Do you think it could be because you love me, Heathcliff? You do love me, don't you? I never thought much about it that way. I know you like food to me and drink. I know that sometimes you're the rain that chills me and sometimes you're the fire that warms me. And when I'm with you, whether we quarrel or laugh or cry, I feel completely satisfied. And when I'm not with you, I feel lost and torn to pieces. I guess that's love, Kathy. At least, 
It's the only love I know. Oh, Heathcliff, I love you too. I love you and I always will. Darling. It's going to storm. We better start back. <laughs> oh, I wish you could see yourself. You're caked with mud. Oh, you're not such an elegant companion yourself. Oh, there's the Linton dog barking. I want to pet him a minute. No, no, don't pet him. He's a mean animal. Stay away from him. I will not. I never saw a dog in my life I couldn't handle. Here, boy. Nice boy. <laughs> I'll get him, Kathy. You ugly beast. I'll, I'll get his throat. Let go. Let go. <laughs> what the deuce are you doing with my dog? Of course, your dog, Linton, or I'll throttle him. Let go. We need to be all right. Are you all right, Kathy? Oh, darling, don't cry like that. Let me see your foot. It hurts. And look how it's bleeding. We'll take care of it at once. I wish I'd killed that dog. You're Miss Cassie Nanshaw, aren't you? Why, yes. Well, I'm a neighbor of yours, Edgar Linton. I've just returned from Oxford. If you'll dismiss your groom, I'll carry you up to the house and have your food attended to. Uh, thank you. That would be very kind. Catherine, she's fainted. I'll carry her to the house. Kindly get your master and Miss Anshaw's maid at once. See here, I'm not a servant. Oh, don't stand there arguing, man. I've got to get help for her. Will you go or must I send one of my men? I'll go. I'll go. Have you seen her, Nelly? Is she all right? I asked Hindley, but I couldn't get any satisfaction out of him. Oh, she's coming along just fine. She'll be home in a few days now. But she's happy as a lark up there at the Linton house. Mr. Edgar waits on her hand and foot. I know. I walked up there last night and I watched them through the window. Nellie, did you ever hate a man so much your fingers ached to kill him? <laughs> Well, Catherine, your things are ready, and the carriage is at the door. I must say, I, I miss you. I miss you too, Edgar. You've been very good to me. I'll continue to be good to you, if you let me, Catherine. Kathy, come out for a run on the moors. Let's get away from houses and people. I can't, Heathcliff. I'm going to a party with Edgar Linton tonight. I have to get ready. Kathy, please. Heathcliff, I've told you I have to get ready for a party. Now, that's all there is to it. Nellie, Kathy's changed so ever since she met Linton. She couldn't care anything for that. Why don't you fix yourself up a bit? Get your hair trimmed and get some decent clothes. Do you think Miss Catherine would marry a man with no ambition to be anything better than the gutter snipe he was born? Yes. I think she loves me and will marry me as I am. I'd stake my life on that. Nellie, Edgar wants me to marry him. Do you love him? Love him? Oh, don't be silly. Do you love Heathcliff? Love Heathcliff? Oh, Nellie, I don't think I can tell you how I feel about Heathcliff. It, it's almost impossible to put into words. I think he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. You can feel that way and yet fight and quarrel and hurt him as you do. Yes, of course. He's not always a pleasure to me, any more than I'm always a pleasure to myself. But in some strange, inexplicable way, I am Heathcliff. I'd follow him. I'd go to him anywhere if he needed me. But, Nellie, I think I must marry Edgar. I talked to Hindley last night. He said if I ever spoke of marrying Heathcliff, he'd shoot him on sight. And that I should know it would degrade me to marry Heathcliff. And in the end, that would shame me and him. Do you think I should marry Edgar? Do you think it's true it would degrade me to marry Heathcliff, Nellie? Well, yes, Kathy, of course it's true. Heathcliff, you were listening. I didn't mean to. I heard you say it would degrade you to marry me. Go ahead, marry Edgar Linton. Live in wealth and security and complete boredom, if you think that will make you happy. But I'll tell you right now it won't. You have red blood in you, my girl. 
You've always run to meet life. You're a half-wild creature, blood, bone, and sinew of the moors, mothered by them, sired by the wild, fierce moor winds, and cradled in the heather. Marry Edgar Linton. See what happens to a moor creature when she forsakes her love and the life she was born to lead. You weren't born for Edgar Linton, Kathy. You were born for me. And I hope that knowledge torments you until it kills you. Now I'll get out of this house and out of this country... But you try to get me out of your heart. <laughs> oh, Kathy, dear, please. You must stop crying like this. You must get some sleep. You haven't been in bed for days. I'm going out. I've got to get out on the moors. There was a rock Heathcliff took me to once. Perhaps he's there. He's been gone for a week. He's far from here by now. He might be on the rock. I've got to see. I'm going out. No, no, not in this rain and wind. I've got to go out. I've got to find Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Heathcliff, my darling, you must be here. Heathcliff. Oh, my darling, you can't be lost to me. You are my laughter and my tears. Yours was the name I cried in my dreaming. Yours are the lips and the arms in my dreaming. Heathcliff, where are you? Heathcliff! Dear God, please tell me the answer. Where is he? Where is he that I may follow him? Could follow him. He's gone into the dark, into the moors. One step from this rock, and our destinies would be joined. One step. God forgive me for the sin I must commit. Keep my body to the earth. Let me sleep until his voice awakens me. Let my heart cease aching. My senses cease throbbing. Let me follow him. Let me follow him. <laughs> you, thank heaven. God forgive you for what you were about to do, Catherine. I want to die, Nellie. What is there to live for? Oh, great dear. Heathcliff is gone. You were a child when you loved him. Now you've lost him and you're a woman. I expect you to face it as a woman. What do you want me to do, Nellie? I want you to come home and I want you to marry Edgar Linton. That's your salvation, Catherine. Can a woman live with her heart dried up inside her? Can she speak when her whole being aches to hear one voice answer her? Can she look at another man when there's only one man her heart would look upon? Oh, can all those things be put by, Nellie? They can be. And they must be. Come, Catherine. In just a moment, Act Two of Wuthering Heights from the stage of the Matinee Theater. You know... When you ask folks to name the best of anything, you just can't expect them to agree. And that is what makes this news all the more amazing. When we asked thousands of folks from coast to coast what home remedy they like best to relieve misery and distress of colds, practically all of them answered, why, Vicks VapoRub, of course. They knew from their own happy experience what wonderful relief from distress of colds VapoRub and its famous penetrating, stimulating action can bring. You see, when you rub vapor rub on your throat, chest, and back, it penetrates. Penetrates direct into the cold, irritated upper bronchial tubes with its special, soothing, medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates. Stimulates chest and back surfaces like a warming poultice. Now, this penetrating, stimulating action of vapor rub keeps on working for hours, 
to help relieve the coughing spasms, muscular soreness or tightness, congestion and irritation in the upper bronchial tubes. And often, most of the misery of the cold is gone overnight. Now remember this. Be sure you get the one and only VapoRub, because only VapoRub can give you this special penetrating, stimulating action. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of cold, Vicks VapoRub. And now the second act of Wuthering Heights, starring Victor Jory. Our scene opens at the front door of the Linden House. Three years later. Heathcliff, is it possible? Heathcliff? Well, Nandy, is this all the greeting you have for me after three years? Good evening, Cathy. Oh, Heathcliff, come in. Oh, it's been so long. My darling. My dearest, my sweet. Oh, you're so beautiful, so very beautiful. Even my memories did you an injustice. Oh, my dearest. No, oh, it's so good to hold you in my arms again. They've been so empty. I don't know how it's possible to love and hate the same person, but I love and hate you, and I should kill you for marrying Edgar Linton. When your world crumbles around you, you either build a new world or die, Heathcliff. I'd rather you died, then. You'll be sorry he ever smiled at you, and so will you, my Catherine. I've come back to live at Wuthering Heights. I have money now. There'll be a way for me to get back at you. Is that why you returned? Yes, that's why I returned. Why, you speak. Oh, Catherine, you asked me to... to wait for you in the morning room, but you're so long coming. I'll I... be there in a moment, Isabella. I don't believe I've had the pleasure of this gentleman's acquaintance, Catherine. I don't believe you have. Isabella, this is Mr. Heathcliff, Edgar's sister, Miss Linton, Mr. Heathcliff. Edgar's sister? Well, we must get acquainted, Miss Linton. Any member of your family is of great interest to me. He's Cliff. Isabella, you were sweet to come out on the moors to meet me. I don't know why Catherine tries to keep me away from you. I don't like to think she's jealous, but I, I don't know what else to think. Isabella, would you run away with me tonight and marry me? But you... You haven't said you love me. But I have asked you to marry me. Will you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'd love to. Come on, then. Let's get back to the house. I'll visit with Kathy while you're getting ready. <laughs> Kathy, how beautiful you are. How much I love you. Please. Don't say such things to me. You've gotten so thin and pale these last few months. Past months that I've been here. You were healthy in the old days, Kathy. It hasn't been exactly easy. Seeing you and not being able to go to you. Catherine, I've come to say goodbye. I'm going to marry Isabella. Marry Isabella? Oh, no, you wouldn't do that. You know me better than to say that. Oh, he's good. Have you not had enough revenge on me? No, my dear, not nearly enough. I want you to suffer the way I've suffered. I want you to think of Isabella in my arms. I want you to know the same torments and hates and fears that I've known, and I want you to die a thousand deaths that I've died. Get out of this house, sir. Get out instantly. Edgar. Ah, oh, the master of the house. Come in and join the brawl. I have been so far for bearing with you, sir, because Kathleen asked me that I accept you as a friend. But I tell you here and now that if I ever find you within my doors again, I will shoot you on sight. Now get out before I have my servants throw you out. <laughs> oh, Kathy, this lamb of yours threatens like a bull. <laughs> it is in danger of splitting its skull against my knuckles. So you'll have your servants throw me out, eh? I wish you joy of your milk-blooded coward, Kathy. I... We'll leave, though. Well, I have a rendezvous I wouldn't care to miss. 
Good day, Mr. Linton, Mrs. Linton. I wish you both great happiness. Oh, how one of you can stomach the other is beyond me. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Isabella, take thee, Heathcliff, to have and to hold from this day forward as long as we both shall live. How is Catherine, Nelly? Did she eat her dinner? No. It's there on the table, untouched. The doctor said I'd better not go into her room at all. She says she's very ill that she might... She's been ill before with cold and fever. Maybe she'll get better. Has she asked about Heathcliff or Isabella? Not once. Nelly! Where are you, Nelly? I'll shut the house down if you don't come out. Be still! Do you want to disturb her with your cries? Isabella and I got back this morning, and I heard in the village that Kathy's ill almost to dying... What happened to her? She walked on the moors all night in the rain after Edgar ordered you from the house. They found her the next day, dazed and half out of her head. Take me to her. Linton's gone to church. I saw him leave. You won't harm her. Harm her? Oh, no. No, I won't harm her. I thought you would never come. Kathy, all my life, how can I bear this? You wanted to break my heart, Heathcliff. You haven't come to bewail the deed now that you've accomplished it, have you? How many years do you mean to live after I'm gone? No. Will you forget me? Will you say 20 years hence? That's the grave of Catherine Earnshaw. I loved her once and sorrowed to lose her. That all passed a long time ago. Don't torture me. You tortured me. Are you possessed with a devil to talk in that manner to me, lying there on that bed that may be your deathbed? Don't you know those words will brand my memory and eat their way into me until they destroy me? Is it not enough that for the rest of my life I must rise in a living hell married to another, weeping for you? Oh, darling, forgive me. Come here. Close beside me, where I can touch your hand. I don't wish you torment me, Squiff. I didn't mean those things. It's just that I don't want to leave you. We should never have been separated. Together we were something beautiful. Alone, each of us has been lost and tormented and useless to anyone. Oh, Kathy. Don't let life slip away from you. Hold on to it. Fight your way back. We'll go away together. We'll start over someplace far away. You do love me, don't you? Love you. You're the only thing I've ever loved in all my life. That love for you is... the evil and the good in me. It's the greatest height I can reach and the lowest depth in which I can grovel. It's heaven and it's hell. It's beauty and it's degradation. Love you. I was born loving you. And I'll die loving you. My dearest, put your arms around me. Let me rest my head on your shoulder. Listen to me, darling. I have not many words left to say. And I want them to belong to you. I love you. I will always love you. And I will wait for you in a cradle of heather out on the moors. Heath Chris, my darling. Can I say my dearest? My dearest. What is the meaning of this? We've both lost her now, Linton. 
We've both lost an hour. Oh, Kathy. 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 Kathy, come in. Oh, my heart, darling, hear me, please. Please hear me. Oh, uh, Mr. Heathcliff. At last. Mr. Heathcliff, uh, you must rest. No, oh, uh, you... You've heard more of the story of Kathy and Heathcliff tonight than anyone in this part of the country. You've heard him say things he would never say if he'd had any knowledge of what he was saying. And she's been dead for 20 years. And still he yearns for her. Yes, he thinks she wanders out on the moors waiting for him. And many's the night he's flung the window open and sat by it all night crying her name and calling her. But she never comes in. She's waiting out there. I heard you outside. I'll open the window and let you come in. Will you come in this time when I open the window, Catherine? Let me no, up. No, no, no. Yes, boy, let rest. me up. Don't I must you. go to her. No, no. She's waiting outside the window. Don't you hear her? No. Let me up. We, we, we must hold him down. Help me, Nellie. Yes, yes, get out of bed. Kathy. Kathy, come in, my dearest. Kathy. Kathy, I hear you. I know you're there. Kathy. The windows. God save us. The windows blow open. Door. Close the windows quickly. I'll hold him. No. Leave them open. Oh, Kathy. My Kathy. He's gone, Nellie. You can close the windows now. He's gone beyond them. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. Jory will tell you about next week's production. And meanwhile, a timely message. Mother, to help relieve distress of children's colds that cause coughing, sore throat, congestion and irritation in the upper bronchial tubes, muscular soreness or tightness, the best-known home remedy you can use is famous Vicks VapoRub. This modern way that most young mothers now depend on is an external treatment, no dosing to upset a child's delicate stomach. You just rub vapor rub on the throat, chest, and back at bedtime, and it starts to work at once to relieve miseries of a cold and bring grand comfort. And vapor rub keeps on working for hours, bringing relief. It invites restful sleep, and often by morning, most of the misery of a child's cold is gone. Why don't you try vapor rub this very day if colds have struck your family? It's especially good for the children, and it works fine for grown ups, too. It's the best-known home remedy in the world for relieving miseries of colds. Vicks VapoRub. This is Victor Jory. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the many kind letters I've received from you suggesting your choice of plays, books, and motion pictures. Need I tell you that your letters and suggestions are always welcome? Please address me, care of Victor Jory. Columbia Broadcasting System, New York 22, New York. Next week, Vic's Matinee Theater will present one of Samuel Goldwyn's greatest motion picture successes. The memorable and exciting story of two people forbidden to love, beloved enemy. Our play was written by Gene Holloway from the book Wuthering Heights and directed by Richard Sandel. Music for the series is under the direction of Mark Warnow. Be sure and listen in again next week when Vic's Matinee Theater presents Beloved Enemy, starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>